So as always, let's go ahead and read the problem all the way through before we start it. The average number of pages in a textbook is 350 pages with a standard deviation of 38 pages. A student claims that the average is less than 350 pages. A sample of 100 books found a mean of 345 pages. Use the traditional method and a significance level of 0 0.01 to test the student's claim. Okay, I've read through it. Nothing's jumping out at me or shocking me. So I'm ready to re-dissect the sentence from the beginning. So the first thing that I read is that the average number of pages is 350. So I like to write all my data off to the side. So right now, this is more the established fact. So that means I have mu is equal to 350. The population average is 350. Continue reading from where I left off with a standard deviation of 38 pages. So the standard deviation is 38. We're still talking about the population here, so I want to use sigma equal to 38, the population standard deviation. Picking back up at the second sentence, a student claims, so here's the part I'm going to have for my claim, that the average is less than 350. So average is less than 350. So that means mu is less than 350 because they're claiming about the established fact. Continue to read. A sample of 100 books, and sample represents my sample size, so n is 100, found a mean of 345. So a mean of 345. Now the subject of this sentence is the sample, so that means whatever data comes after this is sample data, so this mean is x bar that equals 345. Use the traditional method and a significance level of 0.01. Remember, significance level is alpha, so alpha equals 0.01. Okay, so I've read through, I've got all my detailed information off to the side, and I'm ready to start answering my questions. First thing I need to do is find H0 and H1, the null and alternate hypothesis. So because I've stated that sigma is less than 350 and the less than goes in the alternate or alternative hypothesis, sigma equals 350 is my claim, marking it with a C. And remember that the population parameter stays the same, the population value stays the same, the only thing I need to worry about is the sign in the middle, and H0, the null hypothesis, always has equal. So mu equals 350. I'm ready to move on to my test statistic. So for my test statistic, I'll use the formula x bar minus mu divided by the quantity of sigma divided by the square root of n. So we've already established that x bar was 350. I'm sorry, 345. I want to subtract from mu. Now, there's two things. Number one, I have mu over here, but I don't have that it equals 350. I have that it's less than 350. But you could always come over to h naught, the null hypothesis, and you always have what the population parameter equals there. So I'm going to be subtracting 350, dividing by the population standard deviation, because I don't have a sample standard deviation here. Then I'll divide by the square root of the sample size, n, which we found to be 100. Enter all of this into my calculator to get negative 1.31578. Be sure that you can enter it into your calculator and get that same value. If not, the previous video showed you steps on how to enter it in the calculator. And I know some people actually have to enter stuff backwards, like they might do um, 38 divided by 100 square root, and you gotta do a bunch of parentheses and write that number down. But when it comes to my test statistic, I'm just gonna take two digits after the decimal, and with rounding, I'll have negative 1.32. I'm on to the next piece. Now notice the letter CV because the traditional method uses a critical value and so I'm just abbreviating critical value with CV. So to find the CV, I want to start with the statement mu is less than 350, which tells me I have a one tail test. There's two pieces of information I get from that. First is that I do not cut alpha in half. I'm just gonna take all of alpha. I do not do alpha divided by two because all of my alpha is in only one tail. 
And also, because it's left tail, I have a negative critical value. How do I know it's left tail? Because we think of the less than symbol as being like an arrow shooting off to the left side. Do you see all that? So anyways, I don't know, but um, I know I have a left tail test and on the Z table, numbers on the left of the bell-shaped curve are negative. So I wanna look for alpha 0.01 inside the table and as I'm looking in row negative 2.3, I found 0.0102, which is too big and 0 0.0099, which is too small. I see which number is closer, and since the 0, 0, 99 is closer, and it was under row 03, then my critical value is negative 2.33. So box C is where I want to determine whether I reject H0 or fail to reject H0. So for me, it's helpful to look at what information I've gathered so far. So I have this bell-shaped curve with a critical value of negative 2.33. Anything to the left, because I have a left tail test of my critical value, which encompasses the area alpha, is the rejection region, the critical region. And now I compare my test statistic of negative 1. Point, oh, it's actually 3.3, isn't it? Yes, how did, no, no, negative 1.32 is my test statistic. Sorry, I'm freaking out over here. So anyways, because it does not fall in the shaded region, because it is not less than my left tail critical value, then I fail to reject H0. And now I need to write my final conclusion. So I go to my flow chart, and because I have over here that my claim is in H1, of the four boxes, I start with claim is in H1, which is the bottom two choices. Then I choose fail to reject H0, and I'm told to begin with there is not sufficient sample evidence to support the claim that, and I just copy that word for word, I don't even try to reword it in my own verbiage. And then I wanna write a meaningful conclusion to that statement so that somebody could just read this conclusion and not the question above and understand what's going on. So after rereading it, you know, a student claims that the average is less than 350 pages, but the average what, we were talking about a textbook, so I'm going to finish my statement with that the average number of pages in a textbook is less than 350 pages. So the important things here are that it is the average that's being challenged and specifically that the average is less than the amount of 350.